Hello and welcome to the next part of the XCAM tutorial video and today I want to show you the ASL function and all the nice possibilities you have with this function but first I want to give you some tips about the performance if you work with the XCAM so here we go If you work with the XCAM, then it makes really no sense to use a very high view distance because if you play some objects within a small area, then you don't need that. And so my tip is reduce the view distance to get the best performance. And then all the XCAM functions can work as fast as possible. At the moment, I'm using a few distance with around about 4000 meters and I mean it looks really beautiful so the whole landscape looks awesome but if I work with XCAM then I try to get the best performance and there are three different options available within the XCAM to change that a little bit and the first option is of course the view distance and as you already know you can find the view distance down below in the status bar at this point here and there is a possibility to set the view distance to the xcam default view distance and that symbol right click in this button and then you can see the current used view distance is now 2000 meters and if you want to use your own view distance then simply left click this button and then you can see a list with different values and the first one is the view distance and then it's easy simply use these buttons here to increase or decrease the view distance so I will go down to, to this value and the second option to get more frames per second is to disable the shadows and that's also simple select this list entry and then simply right click this button and then the shadows are disabled and the last point in connection to the performance is uh, terrain grid value and here you can see a list with different settings and the smallest value here means best quality and the highest value means lowest quality as you can see no clutter to see anymore okay now I'll go back to the view distance and left click the button to close this small dialog element okay and now we go on with the ASL function and first we have to load a project and by default this function is disabled so that means if you select any object type from the library list and you start to copy them objects then you can see that the objects are following the terrain height and that's the normal mode but if you turn on the ASL mode simply by left click this button ASL then you know also here you can see a small marker to see that this placement mode is currently the active placement mode and now if you copy the objects if you copy that object then you know the objects do not follow the terrain height and all objects have the same height and if you now select this object group and you move 
the objects then you can see that the objects are always following the terrain height and if you select this object group then you can see that the objects do not follow the terrain height and the objects have always the same height and if you select both object groups shift and G then it looks like this now I want to place some objects here and with the first object I turn the ASL mode on on and now copy some objects and as you can see all the objects have the same height and if you now copy this object group press G to select press C to copy then the new object group behaves like the original object group means for all the new objects the ASL function is enabled there is also a small special function available and that means if you if you want to place the objects from one group exactly to the height of another group then that's also simple so for example I will copy this object group and now I want to place this new object group exactly to the height of this object group then this group is selected, OK, press E and now set the focus to any object from this object group and then simply press the key set and then we have exactly the same height also for this group you have always a possibility to switch between ASL on or off during an object selection is active and that's also very simple so first I have to create a new wall and ASL is currently turned off and as you can see the objects are following the terrain height and now it's simple select the whole group G and then press the ASL button and as you can see you can simply switch between on and off and the reverence for the ASL height is always the height of the reverence object and that means if you now turn ASL off and now you switch to another reverence object maybe this one here in the background and now you turn ASL on then you know you have another ASL height but for this example I want to get the height from this object group set the focus, press Z copy set the focus to this object, press
press Z, press space, and I'm ready now. As I said before, the ASL function is basically turned off, and also if no object is selected, of course. But if you select an object that have ASL enabled, and you start to copy this object, then the ASL function is automatically turned on. So for the moment ASL is off. Select this object and start the copy action. ASL is on. If you turn on the ASL function, then you will notice that the selected object is always following the same height. So as you can see here, and for this object I have already saved a user-defined copy distance. And now I will copy this object. And it's also possible to use a restricted movement during the ASL mode is active. So press Y. It's also possible to use a grid moving function during the ASL function is active, and that's also very cool. So first I have to copy some objects, turn the ASL function on, copy, 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 copy space, select the whole group, ASL is on, and now I copy in this group and now I can use the keys on the keypad to you know move the object group by using the movement quit movement mode and then it's simple you know maybe it's easier to select all objects, copy, yes, copy, and now I will show you another very nice example how you can combine the ASL function and the grid moving function. And for this example I have created some objects here. And now I want to create a selection from all these objects. And important for this example is that all the objects have ASL enabled. And that's true. And just a side note at this point, if you want to know how many objects are selected, then simply look at the status bar because the counter value shows you now the count of the objects within the selection as soon as a selection is created. And now we can start with a copy action. But also important at this point is that you have selected the right reference object because the reference object is the reference for the grid moving function. So in this example I have to select this object as the new reference object. 
and now it's easy. Copy in the objects by pressing C. Now press 4 on the numpad to move the objects. Press C. That's really easy. And now I'm ready. At this point it makes really sense to create from all the objects here a new object group. Because for the moment there are many different object groups, so each copy process has created a new object group. And I can show you now why that is so important. But first we have to create the new object group, so press T for the selection brush, pre-select all the objects, and then simply press G and press space to cancel the brush function. And now all the objects are part of one object group. So set the focus to any object, press G, and you know you have all the objects selected. And now if you, for example, move the whole group to a new position, and now you press the spacebar then it's really difficult to select all the objects again because if you don't have the object saved into one group and you imagine that all the objects are saved into ten different groups then you know it's really difficult to select all the objects again. And then the problem that there are other objects crossing uh, the objects and some objects are below the terrain. So that is really hard. But if you have all the objects saved into one group then you know it's, it's simple to move the objects back to another position, to a good position. You have also the possibility to activate the ASL function during the single process active. So for example if you want to place some single objects exactly on the top of this wall then you can use this function in combination with the single brush. So the first step is to select any object type from the library list and for this example I want to use this object. That's okay. And now I press B to start the single brush. And next I have to find the right height for the object. And I will press 7 on the numpad because that function is a little bit faster. So now I think I have to change the height a little bit. And at this point you have find the right height. Then simply press the key U. And that means ASL is now on. And as you can see the marker is also visible. And from now on you can place this object and all the new copies at the same high and that means on the top of this wall. It's a little bit confusing because the mouse pointer is not at the same position as the object. But anyway it it works. Then press return to save the objects. And of course all these objects are also saved into one object group. 
and the ASL function is enabled for all the objects. It's cool. And this combination, single brush with ASL enabled, is also very useful if you work with large stones, for example. And normally it's a little bit tricky to work with very large stones. But with this combination, I mean it's a little bit easier. So I think we can try in this type. So press B to activate the brush and then press U. And then you can see it's it's easy now to find the correct position. Press return to save. Um, I think it, it looks okay. And it makes fun. <laughs> 